So today we're gonna to have a look at the Pine Phone with Gnome. And so this one is actually, so so Fosh, which we looked at last time, is actually very close to, uh, to the Gnome or Gnome. And uh, frankly, I thought this was the best instance of using Gnome on a device. Now I put this on this on card. Of course, if you're doing production, you wanna use a better card than the 64 gigabyte on Walmart brand SD cards. But since all we're doing is just basically doing testing, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. Now, most of your distros will boot automatically off the SD card. The only one I'm finding that doesn't is Ubuntu Touch. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, maybe it has to do with, uh, are they using a, a, a traditional bootloader or are they using the U-Boot um, uh, method, uh, which is on here. So we're just gonna slide the SD card in and then here is that easy replaceable battery that I'd mentioned. You have to take the battery out to remove either the SIM card or the SD card. Uh, let's go ahead and set this guy in there. Snap our back case on. And we will boot this up for the very first time in this distro. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this button on there. We notice a green light up at the top. And this should hopefully boot directly into Postmarket OS for the very first time. Go ahead and cut this down here maybe that'll work while this is booting up if you like this mouse pad over here it is available on the store at shop.switchtolinux.com so right now you can see it's reboot it's resizing the file system during the initial boot we are running postmark os 23.2 12. This is before they're putting system D in with the Linux kernel 6, 4, and 7. And we can see that we're on the Pine Phone uh, 64 Pine Phone. All right, so it starts up, and here we can start in with our sign up. Of course, this is going to be your very familiar GNOME sign in screen. Uh, you can come down here, you can see there's Wi Fi, Bluetooth. There's mobile, there's power balance, dark style. So you can see that we have a lot of the, uh, we have more options in here than we had under Fosh. So click your Linux user and then we need to sign in. And the default password is 147147. So if you remember from our Fosh video, the first major thing that you will notice is that we don't have quite as nice of a, of a login screen, whereas the, um, the Fosh gave us a nice pin. So first boot will take a little bit more time to get logged in, and it should give us here a, uh, a first start screen in a moment. We'll give it a second, see if it does that. And you can see that's what it gave us. Welcome to Postmarket OS. Swipe left to read important information. I guess swipe no for uh, right for now. I don't know is that how it works. So here's the GNOME shell on mobile. So this is still experimental. That's what that first screen is telling us about. Here is if you want to, uh, here's information. If you want to switch just directly to nothing but a raw terminal prompt, Hold the volume down and press the power button three times to switch to the login screen. And then of course you can use SSH and there's other options in there as well. So we'll go ahead and swipe over. Now we can enabling SSH. Uh, this is going to enable you to, uh, to manipulate the phone on another computer if we wanted to do that. Let's go ahead and hit start. All right, so here is what it looks like here with uh, with GNOME. So you notice it's not as responsive as uh, on this as it was on Fosh, but it is still pretty good. Uh, I'd say that Fosh is a better overall user experience, but this gives us the full uh, full function of using our phone. I'm not sure why it has not. Uh, figured out what time it is yet, but here we have you know in the modern gnome this we have our screen cap options So I could in theory do a, a full screen here. I can record a photo. I can record a video We'll actually see if that'll actually work. I have no idea uh, So I saw the little zero up there for just a second and then it disappeared So maybe that's a function that's just not working in this at this point in time 
So as far as other options that we have, here's your tweaks. So inside of here, we can set our, uh, our battery on timer uh, on AC. Uh, here's your maximum battery capacity. So what I don't like about this is it will not allow the phone to charge past 90% by default. I like turning that up. And so let's go ahead and hit the apply option. And then we have to enter our password. Here's our sound, here's our disc unlocker. Here's your appearance. So we have light, we have dark. Let's go ahead and switch it over to dark. There we are, here's your themes. Here's your icons. Of course, we can add extra icons just the way we do any other Linux distribution. Of course, swiping up, you'll see that you have uh, your task up here, and then we have our, our apps that we can use down here. If we have multiple apps open, then you'll be able to swipe up and see and switch between both of these. So you can see here, we can go back to our first one, or we can close them out just by sliding them up. After our very first run, the next thing I did is I connected us up to the wireless network and then I rebooted the phone just to make sure nothing else got, got a little wonky. Uh, our date was fixed when we added our, um, our Wi-Fi, mostly because the, look at this, the, T, the uh, cell signal was turned off. I thought it was on, but it's not. There you go. So it tells us that we have 4G signal right now, uh, which does indeed match the uh, current uh, network. I'm using, of course, the same uh, Mint Mobile um, uh, service on my production phone here. So I have T-Mobile and I have pretty good signal here. So I don't know, maybe we could uh, try doing something. Um, I don't know. Let's let's try making a phone call here. Let's let's see what happens. Go into our dial pad. I'm going to just going to tile the public business number uh, for my web company there. And when I do that, that should hopefully ring my other phone because when you call that, there it goes. Yay, getting a phone call. So phone calls works just fine. So that's turned off. So there you go. We can actually go in and make phone calls. Presumably we can send text messages as well. Uh, let's go ahead and um, maybe we'll, uh, we'll text my, myself as well. So let's do a new message. We're gonna send that out to the same number. I'll of course redact the number from the video, but it is public, so I don't mind if somebody's like, oh my God, I can find your number. Yeah, it's on my business website, actually. Um, let's see, testing. Of course, the only way I will have to get into that, but you'll see that uh, I got a notification back. Um, oh, new text message. Oh, okay, look at that. What's that? I have no earthly idea what in the world that is. Let's open that up. Let's see. Incoming cell broadcast message. Oh, that might might just be because Mint Mobile will oftentimes send you um, a text when you attach the SIM card to a new device. That's probably what that is there. All right, so text messaging is working. Calling is working. And uh, the next thing I guess we can probably try and do is let me grab some Bluetooth headsets and see if I can uh, uh, sync these guys up. So I have these, uh, um, just these cheap skull candy Bluetooth head headsets here. Let me go ahead and pull that guy up. And if I can remember how to cause the sync thing go. Are we syncing or not? I have no idea. Oh, there we go. Now we're into the pairing mode. My headsets told me we were in the pairing mode. Let's hit over to our Bluetooth settings. And hopefully it gets there before my phone decides to stop working. There you go. So it's searching for devices. Dime black. And there it is. My headset is connected. Now one of the problems that I actually had on my other devices when my headset was connected, uh, what I couldn't do is I couldn't do that phone call through my headset. So let's go ahead and call myself back again. Let me go back into recent. And one of the things I found is I couldn't click the button. Like you'd think you should be able to click this and call back and you really can't. So, okay, let's go ahead and do this and see if it rings through on my headset instead. So it is not ringing through the headset. I can't hear it at all. Presumably it's just on the phone, even if I turn that off. So we're just going to go ahead and hang that up. And uh, I will leave in the description there if that call actually went through or not. 
So we'll uh, be able to see for that, but I'll be able to tell what's going on. So despite I have Bluetooth headset connected right now, and this works just fine as a headset everywhere else, I am not actually able to make a phone call with that, at least not easily. So that does uh, cause a couple of little problems, uh, but that's one of those issues that I've been having as well. Now, as far as Nextcloud, I have a my development Nextcloud server set up, but that does not have an authentic SSL, and so it will not connect to that. I think that's more of a feature of uh, GNOME, uh, uh, the GNOME shell will not allow you to connect to a Nextcloud that's not encrypted with an SSL. I did test my production one. That works. Contacts works just fine. But as I discussed in the previous video, uh, Carlander, which is the calendar they give us, despite it is a beautiful calendar for mobile, it does not actually work with a Nextcloud sync. So I could not use that with Nextcloud. Also, Portfolio, the default file system, the, the file... Uh, uh, manager also does not allow you to view your uh, your network shares as well. However, even Nautilus, I installed Nautilus on this on my initial testing of, of GNOME before I installed Fosh on this, and that doesn't actually work well either. So I had no way I could find to sync this phone easily to a Nextcloud account, whether production or a test account. As far as our software is concerned, uh, here is, of course, we just have our, our basic software store, and you can see what's there. Let's go ahead and click over here, and there probably, I'm guessing, there should be some updates. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a test, see what it says. It says loading updates. This could take a while. Well, that's updating. I'm going to point out the battery life. Now, when we first started today the battery was at 89 percent and it is now at 53 percent now to be fair i had about a half hour of messing around with the thing to test a few different things off camera uh, just to see but you'll see it is not super friendly on the battery fosh is a lot better here we are we have an update we have a um well it gave us some updates to do uh but now i don't know what those updates are looking like let's see okay so we have a pine phone network interface um, so network interface, that, I don't know, that might actually solve, uh, that might actually solve some of our firmware issues. Then we have general system stuff and then we have those. I'd have to get this guy connected to a power supply in order to do that. So let's go ahead and connect it to a power supply. So it looks like we're plugged in there and let's go ahead and click that, uh, presumably firmware update and see what that might actually do. I think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to push that update until after uh, I'm done with the, this um, video here. As far as our music, they give us Lollipop. I don't have any music on here yet, but that is a, it is a good choice for a mobile app. It works really well. The downside I found with Lollipop is it requires ID uh, tag information in your files. It will not actually work otherwise. Uh, so if you, uh, it will not do like folder sorting or something that you can do on many other media players. But uh, that's certainly something we can do um, do fine. Uh, megapixels is what they're using for your uh, movies and things like that. And I found it works fairly well. I did do some testing on on videos and, and stuff and that worked. Here is our uh, here's our console. So of course the cool thing about our console here being a, a Linux phone and of course we are connected to our network. Um, we can actually do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, SSH here into my. Whoop, of course I have to hit the space in there. And SSH into our um, test Nextcloud server. Sadly, we can't connect to our test Nextcloud server, but uh, hey, at least we can SSH into it, right? We can do fun stuff like that. And there we are. We are we are using SSH to access my uh, Nextcloud server on my system. So you can see we're actually logged into there. Uh, I don't have anything I specifically want to do in here, just to show you that we can use our network resources. Let's test if our Firefox works. You will notice if you compare this one to the Fosh, this is a little bit, uh, this is a little bit less responsive than Fosh was, but that's okay. That might be, um, 
it's not horribly bad. It's not as bad as Ubuntu Touch, which is sad because I think Ubuntu Touch looks the best of all of them. So we are still connected to Wi-Fi here, so. Of course, this is a basically a full desktop version of Firefox. So anything you can do with a desktop version of Firefox, you can do on this one. So you can see it's transferring data from DuckDuckGo. And it should give us some search results for something. There we are. Here we have uBlock Origin already installed. And then if we pull up our settings here, we can go in and we can adjust all of our settings. So we have all of the options that you have. Now it's not super mobile responsive, so you might want to go ahead and give yourself a, a rotation here to uh, do all those settings. Now this raises another issue in the GNOME, uh, the GNOME build is that your keyboard there's no dedicated button for it. On Fosh, there is a keyboard toggle button that you can always turn it on and off and it's always on the screen. This one here, getting to the keyboard is not always an easy task if you need it. See, I just accidentally closed Firefox because I was just trying to see if I could get that keyboard back up. So you will notice it's not the perfect experience overall, but it does actually work. It does get us the things that we, we, um, we need. All right, let's have a brief look at the rest of our settings. Uh, everything else in here is going to be fairly consistent with GNOME. There's Bluetooth. We should probably turn that off if we're not using it. There's network. There's appearances. Apps. So you can control all your notifications and things like that. So here's our final about information. I have one more thing that I neglected to show, uh, so I'm recording a little bit extra here. So one of the challenges, and this was an issue on, on uh, Fosh as well, but it is a, another issue on, um, on GNOME, and it's actually a little bit worse uh, over here. So if I want to change my password, so remember the default password is 147147. Well, the problem is a password like that is not complicated enough. So if I want to change it, let's say 148148, it doesn't let me do that. So I can't choose a six digit pin. Now I might use a four digit pin on my other phones. So let's say one, two, three, four. It does not let me do that either. Now, no, it's not because only one password block is filled in. It just does not let me use a weak password. Okay, so you notice it will not allow me to change the password. So what can we do is we can use the password system. So let's go ahead and go into the terminal. And of course, remember if you change the password inside of the terminal commands, it doesn't care what you give it. So we'll go ahead and do this, current password 147147. Let's go ahead and change this to my four digit password I want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it updates my password successfully. Let's just go ahead and get out of here. Let's exit out of, out of the terminal. So now let's lock the phone. Now when you unlock it, this is where you will get the pin pad. But notice that the pin pad defaults to six characters. I cannot unlock my phone with that. I have to hit the keyboard option here. And once I hit my keyboard option, now I can go ahead and enter my password of one, two, three, four. So if my password does not exactly six numbers, I'm going to have to use that pin, the, the digit system, no matter what. So whereas uh, when I experimented with Fosh with that very same thing, uh, both the login screen when you first start the phone asks for the pin with the option to go into the keyboard as well. But 
even on startup, you could use a four digit pin or you could use a six digit pin. You could use an eight digit pin that's all numbers. That's okay. So that's one of the issues that GNOME also does not have solved in its system is getting in. So if you want this, you have to use the terminal to change the password to a number only six digit because you can't do that inside the GUI. But then if you do anything inside the GUI that's not exactly six numbers, you're going to have to um, use the, uh, the keypad system instead of the pin system. So that's another limitation I found here on GNOME I thought you'd like, like to know. All right, so there is your brief look at GNOME on the Pine phone. So in final analysis and in, in my thoughts is it does consume battery a lot more. It's not as easy or polished to work with as is Fosh, but it does give us a, a fuller overall experience. It lacks some of the apps that Fosh had that forces apps to work within the confines of the screen if possible. And uh, Fosh is definitely more designed for a mobile, giving us easier access to the uh, digital keyboard and other functions and things we need there. Overall, I found that the Fosh is a better experience. It's not quite as beautiful, um, so you need to wage uh, that thought. Is it the beauty you're looking for or is it the functionality you're looking for? Uh, let me go ahead and test the screen recorder one more time. I tried to do this once and it didn't work. Let's see. So no, the screen recorder is not working at this point in time. Uh, maybe it would after an update, I don't know. But there is our, uh, our look at it. And overall, it is a, a good competent phone build. Uh, not as good as other options, but certainly it is a competent build. So uh, with that, we will wrap this one up here. Thanks for watching. And let me know what other phone, Pine phone build we should look at soon. I might do the Ubuntu Touch soon since I already have an SD card for that and we can also look at Manjaro Plasma since that's what's actually in, installed on the internals of the phone itself right now. So with that, thanks for watching and we will see you all next time.